Hi guys! Today's video is about how lesbian literature has changed throughout the ages. Starting from the days of ancient Greece, you you already know who I'm who I'm talking about, and ending with the current day. I think it's interesting to see how lesbian literature has changed throughout the years, because art is so often a reflection of the time in which it was created. Whilst many things have changed, the yearning has always remained the same since the dawn of women. That's comforting. And um, enjoy! So, we begin our journey all the way back in ancient Greece. Of course, I'm starting with Sappho. She was estimated to have been alive between 630 and 570 BC, before Christ, yo yo. Sappho was a Greek poet from the island of Lesbos. I know, I know. Actually, the words sapphic and lesbian are derived from her own name and that of her island home. She is the OG and her poetry is famous worldwide for its implied lesbianism. There's been a lot of debate about Sappho's sexuality. There's actually not much on record about lesbianism in ancient Greece past Sappho's poetry, but from what I've researched, there wasn't exactly a stigma against homosexuality. There was more of a stigma against people who didn't fit into the assigned gender roles. Yeah, this shit's been going on since ancient Greece and this was more geared towards men. However, the publicity of the sapphic poems show that clearly the subject wasn't exactly banned in ancient Greece, which is something at least. So after Jesus was born, things got spicy and freedom of press was not what it was today. The church on the whole decided they did not like the gays. I do think that may have had something to do with the lack of lesbian literature and instead of writing lesbian literature, people were busy trying not to die from wars and the plague. And from the 16th century to the mid 19th century, homosexuality was punishable by death. So there was not too much call for homosexual literature. Moving along to the 18th century, this is a time where several male authors such as Denis Diderot and the Marquis de Sade used lesbianism to critique and piss off the church. I would not say that Diderot and de Sade were necessarily gay allies, but I do think their contribution to literature, it's interesting the way that they've used lesbianism as a tool to offend and critique the system. The 19th century is worth a mention for a couple of very good reasons, because it is when Anne Lister wrote her famous diary all about her lesbianism in secret code. We love you, sis. And of course, our very own Carl Miller was also created in the 1800s, which I think is actually quite a romantic novel. It doesn't necessarily have the best message or ending about lesbianism. You know, if I was a lesbian back in the day, I definitely would have been grateful for this book before dying of consumption. In the 19th century, published works did not show lesbianism in any kind of a favourable light. It was still very much a tale of moral caution. However, despite all of this, there was a Chinese poet called Wu Sao, who's known as China's greatest lesbian poet, who actually wrote erotic lesbian poetry in the 19th century. And she was pretty loved by the people. She is someone who is often overlooked by Western scholars, because Western scholars are annoying. So moving on to the 20th century, this is where it gets good. Whilst in the early part of this century, works that were explicitly gay were still being banned and censored. For example, in 1920, the Well of Loneliness was produced and it was promptly banned and declared absolutely deviant and awful. There was still a huge movement happening in lesbian literature and novels with lesbian subtext or simmered down versions were being produced with authors such as Juna Barnes, Virginia Woolf and Elsa Gidlow producing subversive lesbian texts. The 20th century is also where we see the rise of Yuri in Japan which was incredibly popular popular amongst schoolgirls. Yuri is a Japanese term for lesbian fiction, manga and animation. Nobuko Yoshia was a prominent figure in this time in Japan because she was one of the first women
women and first authors to produce lesbian fiction. Moving on to the mid 20th century, lesbian pulp fiction emerged. I'm gonna gloss over this because a lot of this lesbian pulp fiction was written by straight men, sometimes posing as female authors for straight men and was really just produced to make a quick buck. However, there were a couple of female authors from this time who also produced lesbian pulp fiction, such as Anne Bannon and Valerie Taylor, who was in fact a gay activist. And I have to admit, the covers are absolutely gorgeous. However, most importantly, the 1950s brought us The Price of Salt, which was a groundbreaking lesbian novel because of its open ending. At the time in mainstream publishing, this was radical. Moving on to the 1960s, we have The Desert of the Heart, which is another lesbian novel which doesn't have an explicitly unhappy ending. By the end of the 60s, homosexuality had been decriminalised in the West, and the 1970s brought us an explosion of feminism, homosexuality, the Stonewall riots, and the rise of women of colour also having a voice in the literary world. Notable literature in this time includes Ruby Fruit Jungle by Rita Mae Brown, which is an explicit autobiography of hers about her own sexuality. And of course, you had works from women such as Andre Lord and Joelle Gomez, whose work didn't only explore lesbianism, but also racial identity. Lesbianism was no longer being tiptoed around in literature, it was no longer subtext, and this is due to the great social changes that were happening in society. Lesbian literature grew and grew in the 1980s and the 1990s, as did gay liberation and awareness. These decades produced some fantastic literature such as The Colour Purple and Oranges Are Not the Only Fruit. Books like these spoke not only of sexuality, but again of race and class. Moving on to the 21st century, there's been an utter boom in diversity of lesbian fiction. There's now comics, fantasy novels, sci-fi, historic pieces, and more women of all types producing literature than ever before. Whilst we have such a fantastic array of lesbian literature here in the West, we need to remember that there are still many parts of the world where LGBT people don't have this kind of access to the literature that we do. And there are still parts of the world where being of an LGBT identity isn't even legal. That's why it's so important we support our LGBT content and take the time to reflect on how we got here and who paved the way for us. Thank you so much for listening and I hope you enjoyed my radio voice. You're very welcome. <laughs>